Okay, let's look at a bit of code. This is just a bit of code to turn my light on, capture frames from the video stream, display them on the screen, and if you press Q, then it stops and turns the light out. The first number of commands there are just to import the functions it's going to use. These next three lines is what turns the light on. Then these next few lines here set up the camera. I'm setting it up for 640 by 360 resolution. Normally computer vision will be done in a very low resolution like 200 by 180 in order to make processing much faster. I've gone for a high resolution so when I display it on the screen on the back of my robot you guys at home can see it but it will dram dramatically slow down my computer vision and make it quite jerky. My next line here just rotates the camera 180 degrees. The reason I do that is my camera is actually mounted upside down on my robot. And the next one here I just set that I'm going to raw capture in RGB arrays. I just have a short little wait to let the camera initialize and get going. Here I create a loop where each time around the loop I take a frame array from the raw capture. And here's where I store that frame array in a variable called image. The next line down, I just simply display that image on the screen in a window called original. Then here, I truncate my raw capture, i.e. I empty the buffer so that the next frame can be written to it. Here, I read to see if a key has been pressed. If that key is the letter Q, then I break out of the loop. If it breaks out of the loop, it just turns the light off and finishes. Right, so let's now see if we can see this in action. I'll just shift the window into the center here. Oh, and that's what it's done. So this here's the little screen on the back of my robot, and you can see if I pick him up and move him around there, I'm just simply capturing frames from the video stream and displaying it on the screen. The next thing we need to learn to do now is how do we process these frames to find the black line. Okay, so before we can learn how to process an image, we need to understand different types of images. There's lots of different types of images, but the three most common we're going to use in computer vision will be full RGB color, grayscale, and binary. Now full RGB color requires three bytes for every single pixel that's in the image. Each pixel has one byte to see what, how much red's in it, one byte for how much green is in it, and one byte for how much blue it is, and that gives you full color. Grayscale is shades of gray, and each pixel on the screen requires one byte just to tell you what shade of gray it is. Then we have a binary image where each pixel only requires one bit of information because each pixel can only be black or white. There's no shades of gray, there's just simply black or white. So in computer vision, one thing we're always trying to do is look for the information we want and get rid of the information we don't want. So normally when we're looking for a black line on a white background, we would just look for the dark patch inside the light patch. And that's what most people did with their color sensors. They had it set to reflected light intensity, which saw how dark or how light it was. The trouble with that is when you came up to the green turn signals or the red patches, they were very hard to tell in light intensity. So when you wanted to see colors, we had to use a different way. And that's what we're gonna do here. Instead of just looking at light intensity, we're going to start looking for specific colors. And that's what the in-range statement does. We have this black line will be a new image and it's going to be a binary image. And it will go through the original image and check every single pixel. And any pixel that is in range of RGB of 000 and RGB of 505050 in the new back black line binary image we turn to on. Next line down here I've changed that instead of displaying our original image, 
we now display our black line image. So let's have a look at this in action. See the robot's down there and running, and you will see the black of the screen, anything that is black is now turned to positive and everything else is turned to negative. So even though there is a green turn signal up there, it's been removed out. And we've removed all information from that image except for the black line. Okay, I've added a little bit more to the code. I've got this first line, IMG contours hierarchy equals cv2.find contours. In the, a copy of the black line image as a tree, um, the approximately simple. Don't worry too much about these variables. Basically what this line does is it finds the contours around the outside of any shapes and it's going to store it in the contours variable. The very next line down, what we're going to do is we're just going to draw all those contours over our original image. Not over our black line image because we won't see it, it's just binary, but we're going to draw it over our original image, all the contours. The negative one just means all the contours. If I put uh, a different number there, it will just draw whichever contour it corresponds to that number. Negative one means it all. Then we have uh, what color we're going to do, which is going to be 255 which in the green section and zero in the blue and the red, so it'll be nice and green. And then just the thickness of the line, it's going to be three. And then what we've done is we've changed this here. Instead of showing the black line, we're going to show the original with the contours. And I'm going to show the variable image because we've drawn the contours on it. So if we have a look here, this here is up and running now. You can see it's drawing the contours. Now, first thing you notice is there's a little round dot in the line. If we come up here quite close, you'll see how there's a speck on the black line. So this is a common trouble we have in CV is you can have what's called noise. As we come up here to the gaps in the tiles, you can find, you can also get noise from the gaps in the tiles, especially if they're say a little bit wider. See how a bit of noise is starting to come through. Anything that can sort of, that comes in range starts to become noise. Let me come through in here. You can see it's just looking for the black line, and hopefully we don't get too much noise. Right, I've put another couple of lines in to start to get rid of this noise. I've made a, a 3 by 3 kernel, so it basically it's a 9 matrix, where each pixel through the image will be the centre one, and it will look at one row around it. All right. The next line down here, I'll make my black line binary image equal to cv 2 of my original black image by the area of my kernel and iterations means 2 means it'll go around twice. If I increase that iterations or I increase the size of my kernel it will erode the black line more and that will help us to start to get rid of some of the noise. You can see in this gap now we no longer have all those noises they have been eroded away gap keeps getting bigger, it'll erode a little bit, erode a little bit. If I let the gap start to get too big, it'll get to the point that I don't erode that way. Now you'll also notice that my contours now are actually fractionally inside the black line because it's also eroding the black line. If I get to the point where I erode it quite a lot, so I'll take my iterations up to say 5 now. I'll save that. And we'll rerun that program. Oop. You can see now I've eroded everything quite a lot. So now I've, it erodes the black line, but you'll find it'll be very good at eroding this noise out. This can get quite, 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 quite thick before it starts coming in. If I start getting crazy with my eroding, I can get to the point I can nearly end up eroding my whole image away. So I take my iterations here from 5 up to say 10 now. I'll rerun this program. See now, I'm really eroding it away. I'm getting to the point I'm nearly eroding my black line away. That means 
a lot, a lot of noise is gone, it's not till it gets quite a lot of gap that I'll get that out. And that helps me to get out the noise on the gaps or when I have speed bumps or little bits in. But you will find that when we come back here to this spec, it doesn't get rid of the spec. Because the spec is in extra spots in, it's holes out. Okay, I've just added one more line of code in now, a dilate. It's almost identical to the erode, but what it does is it does the opposite. Erode shrinks down and dilate grows up. So when we shrink down the erode, anything too small will be eroded away to nothing. Dilate will uh, grow up, so it will fill in any holes there are. So before where we had a hole, where that spec was, no longer exists. Also, when we start to go up here where the two bits join together, you'll notice that they're filled in now. That's because the dilate has filled them in and we get a much more even road to follow. Okay, we've added to the code a little bit more. Basically, this line says, if the length of the contours is larger than zero, so if it's found some contours, we're gonna draw a bounding rectangle around the first contour. Bounding rectangle returns the starting X and Y position of the bounding rectangle and the width and the height of the bounding rectangle. And we're going to do of the very first contour, they always start counting by a zero. Then we're actually going to draw that bounding rectangle on the original image so we can see it. So we're going to draw it on the, on the image, the X and Y position is the start of the rectangle and the X plus the width and the Y plus the height will be the ending position in red color three pixels thick. So let's have a look at this in action now. You'll see that I have a red bounding rectangle. If I start getting to the side there, you can see it just goes whatever bounding rectangle we can get. Right. Okay, I've only added one more line of code here. I'm going to draw a line on the image of the X coordinate of the bounding rectangle plus half the width from the Y position of zero to the X coordinate plus half the width to 360 degrees. So basically it should draw a vertical line from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen, uh, whatever the X is of the bounding rectangle plus half the width, and it's gonna draw it in blue color this time, three mil thick. So let's have a little bit of a look at that. And that's what we see in there. So basically you'll get a line straight down the middle of the bounding rectangle box. Or well, really what it's going to be is a line through the middle of the black. Okay, so all I've done with the code now is I've removed two lines. I've removed the line where we draw the contour in green and removed the line where we draw the rectangle in red and just left the one line in where we draw a blue line vertically up and down in the middle of the bounding rectangle. And when we have a look at that, the effect of that in the program means we'll have a line vertically up and down in the middle of wherever the line is. And no matter where I shift the line in the screen or what angle I put it at, you'll find that blue line will be in the middle. And as we come up to the corners, it will start to move across to be in the middle of the line there like that. But as you turn around and it's the, ro the robot starts to rotate and follow the line, the blue will always end up in the center. All right, so that blue line is what you're after, which is just simply the X position of the bounding rectangle plus half the width. And that's all you want to know. That's the center of the black line. All the rest is just to make it look pretty. Okay, one little last bit left to change on the code. Now instead of processing the whole image, normally in computer vision, what you do is you just process the small part that you're concerned with. They call this the region of interest. So I'm gonna cut out our region of interest. So we're gonna say region of interest equals image, and we're gonna cut it out from the X position, sorry, the Y position in 200 to 250 and the X position all the way from 0 to 639. So basically, it's going to cut out a horizontal strip um, at 200 down to 250. 
And then I've just, instead of where I did the black line, instead of being in range of the whole image, I've just used it to be in range of the region of interest. So now I'm only processing the region of interest rather than the whole image. And then when I've gone down here and I've drawn the blue line on, instead of drawing it vertically from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen, I've just drawn it in at my region of interest, which is from 200 to 250. All right, let's see that in action. So now when I have a look here, I just have a little blue line that's drawn in my region of interest, and I'm just accessing that region of interest. And no matter where this, where I move the robot around, or how I twist the robot, or whatever, it will find the black line in that region of interest. And obviously, you know where that black line is. It's going to be your x plus half the width of your bounding rectangle. And that's all you guys need. And then, of course, you're just going to build a robot that steers based upon that. Right? And that will be your first one that you build. Nice and easy. You can see we can just simply track that line across in that area there.